We have a new Jaguar sighting out of Southern Arizona. In today's video, we're going to discuss this finding, talk about the history of Jaguars in the United States, and briefly detail the conservation efforts for this incredible species. As always, links are in the description, timestamps are down below, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things YouTubers tell you to do, and consider backing me on Patreon. Let's get into it. Several news articles have talked about a new jaguar sighted in southern Arizona. And when you go through them, you find that it's actually from this YouTube video. I have this link down here. I'll try to add a card as well. I think I can do that. Um, I'm not going to play the video, but this is from Jason Miller Outdoors, and he has several trail cameras, which caught, among many other animals in this video, a uh, a gorgeous jaguar. Uh, so this is out in Arizona public lands, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm not going to show the, the precise location, just as a general rule, I don't do that. However, um, just know that this is in southern Arizona. So here we have the jaguardata.info database. Um, so this is going to give us a very, very general overview of where the species was found. And we know that it is in southern Arizona. So this database shows us um, all sorts of sightings of jaguars dating back to 1845 out near San Antonio uh, in Bexar, Texas. Um, always wonder if it's actually pronounced Bexar or whatnot. I grew up in Texas. I should know this. Um, anyways, but what we see here is that jaguar activity in the United States, we have seen them in Arizona. We have seen them in New Mexico. Um, the history of the jaguar range, these are not just Central and South American species. In fact, their historical range does include much of the South uh, the southern, southwestern United States, um, as we can see in this image here. Let's zoom in. This is from a recent publication um, back in 2018, if I remember correctly. But we see that these dashed lines indicate the jaguar's historical range. And you see that it does go uh, through Baja, California, up into the southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, south Texas. Uh, there are reported sightings, uh, reported anecdotes of jaguars as far as Louisiana. However, those are, uh, those are not as uh, robust as some of the other sightings. Um, but I, I just really want to hammer home the point here is that jaguars have been in the United States and they were up until the uh, colonization period of the United States where European colonizers came through and during that time period uh, a large amount of jaguars were killed off, usually as danger to livestock, uh, danger to humans, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, uh, but as well as for poaching for their pelts. Um, as long as animals have gorgeous looking pelts, people will poach them. Uh, and this led to the dramatic decline of the jaguars in the United States. Um, the last resident U.S. jaguar uh, was killed in 1964. Uh, this was a few years before the Endangered Species Act actually came into uh, being. And this species was ultimately put on the Endangered Species Act in 1972, uh, after it was presumed to be extinct in the United States. So uh, the Center for Biological Diversity has a phenomenal, uh, absolutely phenomenal FAQ about jaguars. And uh, much, much of the information that I'm finding is from here or references this information. Uh, so I will be linking this down below, but I want to talk about this most recent Jaguar because this is not the first Jaguar in the United States. Um, it, uh, as of recently, the not the, not the first uh, reintroduced, uh, it's not even reintroduced, it is a uh, uh, it's a natural range expansion. So these are jaguars that are found in northern Mexico. We know of populations there uh, just south of Arizona, as well as another population uh, south of Texas, both of which, if I remember correctly, are in decline. So these jaguars that we are seeing in southern Arizona are thought to be natural range expansions. These are uh, jaguars from Mexico that are crossing into the United States. Now, again, the jaguars are a native species. Um, they were here long before humans. Um, and yeah, so I, I fully agree that these need to have full protection. Um, I don't really entertain the arguments about livestock um, issues. Um, of course, if the jaguars do consume livestock, um, there are bounty programs that will 
pay the farmers for that livestock. Um, but the, the idea that we need to live without predators uh, ignores ecology, evolution, and biodiversity conservation as a whole. I'm going to add a little bit extra information about the threats of jaguars to humans because the, the fears of them are, are largely unfounded. Uh, so first, the first official record of a jaguar killing uh, a human in Brazil dates to January, uh, June of 2008. That's the first official record. Uh, two children were attacked by jaguars in Guyana, and a majority of known attacks on people happened when it had been cornered or wounded. So uh, jaguar attacks are, are extraordinarily rare. I, I work in the range of jaguars down in Belize, and there they're primarily eating uh, armadillos and uh uh, agouti and, and peccary so these kind of small medium medium larger sized uh, rodents and uh, mammals so throughout the range they will eat things like capybara um, some of the uh, anteaters as well as if, if they were in the united states in the southeast in the southeastern united states out in louisiana they, they would be consuming nutria is what the thought was so uh, the 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 Jaguars don't really have a need to attack humans, but but with this, they're also not going to be attacking uh, livestock. They're not going to be attacking your uh, cattle that is going to be ranching out there. That's just not in their um, not in their preferred prey. Uh, of course, it can happen if there is not plentiful food for them. Of course, it can happen. Um, if they're going after the young cattle or the sick or the old or they're opportunistically uh, taking a weaker cattle, right? But it is not their primary prey source. And this is one of these things with biodiversity conservation that it's not just enough to save the individual species. We need to save the entire ecosystem, the entire food web. Um, and in this case, it may actually help uh, mitigate the the human wildlife conflict with jaguars uh supposedly there's a quote uh, from charles darwin even saying that the indigenous peoples of south america stated that you don't need to fear the jaguar as long as capybaras were abundant so again as long as they are well fed uh you are safe but let's get back to this jaguar because there have been a handful of other jaguars sighted in the united states whether that's on camera traps uh roadway collisions or uh killed by hunters or whatever that you know method killed them, right? Uh, so how do we know that this is a new cat? How do we know? Well, it's actually due to these spots. Uh, jaguars, just like human fingerprints, have unique spot patterns, and we can use these spot patterns to identify new individuals. So this uh, individual caught on game cameras by, again, uh, Jason Miller, uh, he sent them over to, I believe it was, it might have been Arizona Fish and Wildlife, possibly, federal but i don't remember but one of the fish and wildlife's and they were able to confirm based on their other sightings their other photographic evidence of other jaguars that this in, is indeed a new individual not previously known in the area um, of course you know we never know if someone else had got them on the game cameras or their own game cameras and they just didn't report it for whatever reason um, that does happen quite a bit and i can understand the sentiments behind not reporting really rare species that has a high high probability of being poached um, but I do think that this is a fascinating, fascinating, amazing uh, observation, and seeing jaguars here in the United States is is just absolutely incredible. Uh, but, of course, it's not enough that we see them. We need to conserve them. So what does jaguar conservation actually look like? For the conservation, I want to focus on the Center for Biological Diversity, because I think they're stories and ways of being involved in jaguar conservation in the United States um, has really touched upon a lot of different elements of conservation. Uh, just like with any conservation project, it takes more than one organization, more than one group, more than one person to save a species. It, it does take a village to save a forest, right? And the CBD has often been involved in very legal battles. So the, we mentioned that the jaguars were placed on the endangered species list in 1972. However, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service removed the jaguars from the list in 1980 due to more or less public objections, which is not at all how the Endangered Species Act should be. Uh, in 1997, the jaguars were again protected as endangered thanks to a CBD campaign. Uh, after that, the Center for Biological Diversity sued Fish and Wildlife Service three times to win a recovery plan in critical habitat. Uh, so jaguars only got designated critical habitat in 2014 and a recovery plan in 20. 19. So this is an animal, a very enigmatic animal, that was on the Endangered Species Act in 1972. 
um, but they basically got no real protections from it. And in fact, they didn't have any protections for uh, almost two decades. And after being added in 1997, they really only got critical habitat and a recovery plan um, nearly two and a half, three decades later. So the CBD in this case is acting very much so like a... Uh, like, like the fire under the asses of Fish and Wildlife Service uh, to actually do something for the species, right? And, and I mean, I don't want to act like they've done nothing, but this is um, considering the enigmatic nature of this species and it's uh, the fact that it is very much so endangered in the United States. It's, it's incredible that this took this long. Um, and in fact, uh, the CBD helped reveal a cover-up in 2009 after Arizona Game and Fish Department illegally killed the only known jaguar in the United States at the time, lied about the circumstances, and they successfully sued the department to ensure it never kills another jaguar. Uh, so this is something that I always want to say, um, really want to focus on here, uh, is that the conservation, the world of conservation, doesn't exist just out in the nature, right? It's not enough to just protect a plot of land. Uh, having actual policy changes, having an actual legal framework to protect these species is needed in today's day and age. Um, in fact, uh, in 2022, the CBD, as well as several allies, a federal appeals court upheld a decision to block a vast open pit mine in jaguar critical habitat south of Tucson. Um, essentially, if these jaguars did not have this endangered species protection, if they did not have the protections, an area of their critical habitat would have an open pit mine, um, in essence, destroying that habitat. And then in December of 2022, the center is again petitioning the Fish and Wildlife Service to reintroduce jaguars in New Mexico and designate much more critical habitat in both New Mexico and Arizona. Um, so this is, uh, again, this is conservation happening in the court system. This is conservation happening at the policy level. But what you see is that it is all feeding back into actual boots on the ground conservation. They are designating critical habitat. That critical habitat can absolutely be used for research, for preserving these species, for conserving them, right? Um, as well as this opens up the way for more funding, more grant opportunities, more ways to actually raise money for jaguar conservation. And in fact, this is all going to go to the various groups and organizations in Arizona, in New Mexico, um, in the historical range of the jaguars so that they can preserve them, so they can conserve them long, long term. Um, and so really that that's that's about it for it. So the 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 jaguar conservation, the, the story of jaguar conservation in the United States is really just starting. Uh, there's a large group of passionate people who are working extraordinarily hard to conserve these in incredible animals. Um, but what I really, really love is that this was, um, in essence, citizen science that helped us understand more about this, uh, this new jaguar, right? This was uh, Jason Miller, some guy who essentially just some guy who put out some game cameras, right? But he, he knew where to talk to. He knew how to actually make sure this gets to the right people so that it can get conserved, right? Um, but that's all I have for you today. Again, like, comment, subscribe, do all those fun things. Um, if you want to see more, hey, support the channel. Thanks. Have a great day.